I'm going to be a witness. Oh, witness, witness, I'm going to be, I'm going to let my light shine, I'm going to let my light shine, oh, shine. Shine, oh, I'm going to let, he has done great things, great things, great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Amen. Let the heart say amen. 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 I wanted him for today. Is him joy to 120. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. Heaven and nature sing. And heaven heaven nature sing let us stand Joy to the world, the Lord. Let earth receive. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior Let men the songs implore While fears and floods, rock hills and plain Repeat the sounding job, repeat the sounding job Repeat, repeat the sounding job he rules in and sorrow grow. No thorns infest the ground. He come to make his blessings flow. For as the curse is found, for as the curse is found, for as, for as the curse is found. He rules the world truth and grace and may the name shall prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love let us pray father we stretch our hands to thee no other help we know but if thou would draw thyself from us O oh, whether shall we go eternal God our father so once more and again God you have allowed fear of your unbelieving believing children here at Townsend Chapel to enter into the courts with thanksgiving. We come here, Lord, first of all, saying thank you. Thank you, thank you God, for another week's journey. Yes. Thank you, God, for allowing us to wake up this morning, clothed in our right mind with a portion of health and strength. 
Thank you, God, for the morsel of food that was prepared for us this morning. Thank you, God, for traveling mercies as we travel from north, south, east, and west. As we make it to 252 Eagle Street. And so, God, we understand and we realize, oh, God, that we didn't do anything so good that allowed us to be here. But, God, we say thank you for grace and mercy pleading our case this morning. We're grateful and thankful for the judge who extended our stay a little while longer. And we say thank you, God. Oh, God, we ask right now, first of all, God, that you will move anything like sin from each and every one of us that will hinder us from receiving a blessing today. God, we need you more than we ever needed you before, God, because we're living in some critical time. We're living in some trying time. So much is going on throughout the world, but we know, God, that you still sit high and you still look low, and we know, God, that you still have all power in your hand. So, God, so come in this place this morning and let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn in this place. But, God, we don't want to be selfish. Wherever the gospel is being preached this morning, God, uh, we ask, God, that somebody hear a word that will touch them this morning. Now, God, we lift up the leaders of all. We lift up our president. Governors, mayor, councilmen, we ask God that you bless them and protect them this morning. And then we pray for leadership in our churches, regardless of the denomination. Bless leadership this morning. Give them power this morning. Now, God, we're living in some critical time, but we know, God, that you are the answer for the world today. Above you, there's no other because you are the way. Then God, when it's all over down here, we ask God that you give us a home where we can praise you better than we do right now. It is in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Let every heart say, Amen. Wonders of his love Wonders of his love And wonders And wonders of his love He rules the world With truth and grace And makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love from the choir.
Come on, fellas. He's done so much for me. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He's done so much. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. Wash my sins away. He washed my sins away. I cannot tell it all. Wash my sins away. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. Wash my sins away. He wash my sins away. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. Cannot tell it all. He was. I cannot, I cannot tell it all. Oh, I cannot He walks and talks with me. He walks and talks with me. I cannot Do I have a witness this morning? Yes, he does. He walks and talks. He walks and talks with me. I cannot Oh, I cannot tell it all. He gave me victory. He gave me victory. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He gave me victory. I cannot tell it all. I cannot. Tell it all. He's done so much. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell. That of our hearts say, man. So for you, that you can't tell it all. David said, if I had a thousand tongues, still wouldn't have enough to praise him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Those of you have your Bible, turn with me to the New Testament, Second Peter, chapter. 3. Three verses eight through fifteen, and you'll find these words. Second Peter, chapter three, verses eight through fifteen. Reading from the New Living Translation. You'll find this word, but you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come 
as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very element themselves will disappear in fire, and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. And since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live. Looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it alone. On that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. But we are looking forward to the new heaven and new earth he has promised a word filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved and this is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. This is God's word for God's people. Let the church say amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to light the candle. The second candle of the Advent season, we ask that you come and give our message. Good morning. Last Sunday, Sister Price told us about hope, and she lit the candle of hope. I don't know how to. The second candle on the Advent wreath represents peace. Uh -uh, uh -uh, go that way. And it's also purple. Often called the Bethlehem candle, this candle reminds us of Mary and Joseph's journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem before Mary gave birth to Jesus. It also builds on the meaning of the prophecy candle, recalling that after the division, destruction, and dispersion of the kingdom in the Old Testament, there might be peace on earth. Amen. Thank you so much. As we, as a musician, play softly. And as we ref reflect on the two candles that we find hope having that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as a result of that relationship, he will give us perfect peace. As a musician plays softly, we get opportunity to have a prayer for those who are suffering. We ask that you remember Sister Faye Borum in your prayers. We ask for your
continue to pray for Sister Aretha Reynolds, who said farewell to her, one of her grandchildren. Pray for her. We should listen for your prayer for Sister Isaiah, who is getting ready to have surgery this week. We ask that you will cover her. Continue to pray for Sister Sarah Jones, Brother Sumter Wesley, Brother Ted Brown, Bernice Bradley, Annie Green. Continue to pray for our brothers and sisters across the globe. As you pray for my family, uh, one of my close cousins has been placed in hospice, and it's just a matter of time. But we still know who holds hand time in their hands. God is still in control. Let us pray, Father God, in Jesus. Name we come at this time asking for your blessing upon those that are sick, those that are recovering from surgeries, and those that are recovering from saying farewell to loved ones. And we ask for your blessing upon them and let them know that you'll never leave them and that you will never, that you will always be there until the end of time. Because, God, we know that you're all caring and you're all loving and you're all powerful. We know, God, that when we go through these situations of life, these trials of life, we know, God, that you are right there with us, holding us up, carrying us. You're in front of us, you're beside us, and you're behind us all that time. So God, we put our trust in you. We put our faith in you. God, we say thank you. So God, keep us in your care. Let us fear you, Lord. Let us know that you are with us. These blessings and requests we ask in your son, Jesus. Let our heart say, amen. And amen. If you would turn your attention to the book of 2 Peter chapter Three. We read in your hearing, Second Peter chapter three, eight through fifteen. We're not going to read all those verses over, but we encourage you to not only read them at your convenience but read the entire third chapter title the day of the Lord is coming verse 14 and 15 says 13 and 14. But we are looking forward to the new heaven and new earth. He has promised a world filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear brothers and, and so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure 
and blameless in his sight. Amen. I want to use for a subject for this sermon is where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Celestia from the choir, give my hand as they come. Give you all the 
glory. We give you all the glory, Christ, Christ the Lord. Sing it again, Pastor. We give you. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Cry, cry. Tell us, oh, come let us adore him. 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 Cry the Lord. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Cry the Lord. Oh, come. Oh, come let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Let the words of the mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. For Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say, Amen. Amen. But we're looking forward to the new heavens and new earth. And he has promised a war filled with God's righteousness. So, dear brother, dear friends, why you are waiting for these things to happen? Make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. Where do we go from here? My dear friends, my Sisters and my dear brothers, one of my favorite game shows that I watch from time to time, it was also one of my mother's favorite uh, game show, is called Family Feud. Sure. And those of you who are my age and maybe a little older remember back in the day it used to be hosted by a man by the name of Richard Dawson yes sir and Richard Dawson was known for every time a female stood in front of him he would have to kiss him but then later on there were some other, other hosts but one of them was the our favorite host has to be Steve Harvey. And the, the gist of this show is there were, they were asked various questions, Sister Catherine, and they would take a survey of 100 people. And then when they read the question, he would say the top several answer. It's up there on the board. And the, the purpose is to guess the most popular answer a question. I would like to propose and use my imagination if the question that I would propose to you is, what is the most important resource that we have at our disposal. Ding, 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 ding. And if we were to ask 100 people, we would get various answers. But I believe someone would probably say the most important resources that we have our, to our disposal is 
uh, oil because we need oil to make gas to put in our cars so we can drive to Townsley and hear that dynamic pastor preach. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Some may say, well, most important resources that we need, that we have to our disposal, that we're exposed to, to our disposal is we need silver and gold. We have to understand that silver and gold undergirds our economy, undergirds our currency. You go to Fort Knox and there's gold up there that is supposed to be undergirding the, our economics, our currency. Without gold, your dollar bill would just be a sheet of paper. So will someone say we may need silver and gold? Or uh, some may say, well, we need good, clean air and water. Those are some of the resources that, that we need, and, and definitely we do need good, clean air and good, clean water. But I suggest to you, my beloved brothers and sisters, that in spite of all of those resources, the oil and the gas and the oil and the silver and gold and clean air and clean water, although those are very expensive, important resources to have to our, at our disposal. But most of all, I come by to tell you that the most important resources that we have at our disposal is time. And because, my beloved brothers, we have time at our disposal, it, is, it behooves all of us, it, it is imperative, my dear brothers and sisters, that we do not waste the time that God has given us. Because this past week I went to a funeral. We had to say farewell person who was just, I think she's about 38 to 40 years old. That's not a whole lot of time. And then there are others, my blood brothers and sisters that we go to the cemetery and say farewell to our loved ones, and then there are some graves that are long, and then there are some graves that are short. That lets me know that we just don't know how much time that God has allotted for us to have. The Bible tells us uh, about living three scores and ten. And if there are others who live beyond that, that is definitely a blessing. But my beloved brothers and sisters, sometimes when I'm scanning through internet, I notice sometimes when you go to the very website of the funeral, the funeral directors, whether it's Adams or Campbell, Fox and Weeds, Strickland, whatever the case may be, that sometimes the dates of the, those that have transitioned, there's a long gap and then there's a short gap. So it lets us know that we don't understand, that we don't know how much time that we are going to be here. And so it behooves all of us that we make the best of the time that we have. Today we are celebrating the second day of Advent. The second Sunday in Advent is known as peace. As we await the arrival of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And throughout history there have been people who are trying to figure out calculate, predict when he's coming back. And then there are some who just really don't give a hoot. But I come by to tell you, my beloved brothers and sisters, uh, those of us who have been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, we should be looking forward to that day. Because we understand that we have our ticket, we got our house in order, and one day we're going back to live with the Lord. 
and we're looking for the day that we're going to see our mama again, our daddy again, our sisters, our brothers, our friends. We're looking for that day. But until that time, what do we do? And where do we go from here? Dr. Dirt, Gila James, Lange, who was at one time the Assistant General Secretary of the Ecumenical Relation of the Lutheran World Federation in Geneva, Switzerland. He writes an article that said, this text, like many other Advent texts, invite us into a space of exploration. What does it mean to wait, to live in hope, to live in faith? For isn't living in faith always living in hope? And he asks, does this waiting have any consequences for the community? The waiting is obviously not defined as simply preparing for Christmas. No, it is an anachronistic waiting. Waiting for Jesus' birth, that has already taken place. But these verses, 2 Peter 3, allow us to sit in God's space and time. The community of faith is waiting for God's judgment, not in fear, but with great desire. We don't have to be afraid of his coming as long as we have him on the inside. We don't have to be worried. We don't have to fret because we know that we know that we know that we are a child of his. Son said, if anybody asks me who I am, tell them I'm a child of the king. So we don't have to worry. We don't have to fret. So, so, so Peter is writing to us. Uh, uh, so at least this letter has been authored by Peter. We don't know for sure. Scholars may say, may not, but Peter's name is on it. So we're going to assume that it was written by Peter. But Paul, Peter says here in this eighth verse, he say, you must not forget this one thing, my friend, that a, thou a day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. In other words, my beloved brothers and sisters, when it come down to the Lord Jesus, you cannot measure him by time. Have I got a witness here? You can't measure him by time. Time, you can't measure the Lord by time because uh, time, uh, he's an eternal being. Uh, we are limited beings. He is everlasting. We are limited. He's the first and the last. We are just limited and so my beloved brothers and sisters, he's letting us know, he's letting us know that, uh, that the Lord is really, he said the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise. The Lord is just being patient with us. You know, you, you know we who are parents and your children start cutting up and you know what you need to do. You know what you ought to do, but for, for some reason or another, you're just being a little patient. But how many of you know, remember, when, 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 if, when, the, when the rubber met the road? Mama and daddy say, I'm getting you for old and new. Because they understand, they understood that if I don't get it right now, we're going to have a problem down the road. My beloved brothers and sisters, God is being patient with us. Why? Because he doesn't want any of us to be destroyed. He's being patient. He's being patient for, for your sake, for our sake, because he doesn't want anyone to be destroyed, but he wants everyone to repent. He wants everyone to come to him. Why? Because the Bible said that the day of the Lord will come 
unexpectedly, the King James Version said it will come like a thief. And the night. You know anything about a thief? Thief does not let you know he's coming. He does not send you a letter saying, I'm going to break in your house tonight. But what the, but what, but what the thief does, he case out the joint. He case out your house. He, he sits back, he or she, sits back and watch your house. They watch your pattern. They watch how you go in and how you go out. Watch how you go to work and when you come back. And they may follow you to work just to see which way you go to work and time how long it takes you to get back from work. That's what a thief does. And once the thief got down your pattern, then they know how long it takes to get in and to get out. My beloved brothers and sisters, we have to understand that Jesus is coming like a thief in the night. And I want you to know Jesus is watching us. He's casing the joint. He's watching us day in and day out. But the thing about it is, he, the Lord God is holding him back. Giving us an opportunity to make sure that we decide and make the right choices in life and to accept God as our Savior. And to accept Jesus as our Savior. So when the time comes that when we show up, we'll be covered. Remember, this is why I need to, when children of Israel got ready to leave Egypt, God told them to get a lamb and sacrifice it. Take the blood and put it over the doorpost. And then eat up all the lamb. And then get ready to leave. And when death angels fly over and when the angels see the blood, the angel will pass over. My beloved brothers and sisters, so it was then, so it is now. That to make sure that we have been covered by the blood. When the death angel come, have I got a witness here? When the death angel come, or if the Lord should come and we are still here, the Lord will see the blood. You'll see the blood. We say one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. I know it was the blood that saved me mean but he said but the day of the lord will come like a thief in the night and the bible said that that the heavens will pass away now when he say the heavens with the s he's talking about the planets the galaxies and all the stuff that you can see on the telescope god gonna destroy all of that Yes, the heavens will pass away with the terrible noise, and the elements themselves will disappear in fire. All right, All right. And the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. My beloved brothers and sisters, when all of that takes place, he's going to look at the church. He's going to look at our record. And to make sure that we are where we supposed to be. He tells us, my beloved brothers and sisters in the text, three things that we should do as I, before I take my seat. Verse 14 goes on to say, dear brothers, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives. We got to make sure that we're living in a peaceful way, peaceful life. That means that our relationship with God should be good and our relationship with each other. Second Corinthians 3, 13, 11 said, follow me, brothers and sisters, rejoice, strive for full restoration, encourage one another. 
Let me say that again. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. God, we're living in a critical time that it's time for God's church to be able to live in peace because there are some people on the outside living in chaos and they need to be able to find a place and go somewhere where they can have some peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going to Applebee's and sitting at the bar may not bring you peace. Going to down on River Street, going to Wet Willis may not give you peace. Going to some of these other places we will not give you peace. But if God's people can get it right on the inside and show it on the outside, then God's those who are living in chaos will be able to find peace. Yes, 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 yes. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God which transcend all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. When we got Jesus inside of us, we will have peace. And then if you really got him, when you go on your job, when you go out through the community, people can tell when you got peace. Yes, I heard your sister Zipper doing Sunday school when you were talking about the way people carry on at some funerals and they all about to jump in the casket and go say, take me with you. And, uh, that's a person who don't have peace. But if you got peace down on the inside, you'll still be able to make it even during some tragic time when you have to say farewell to a loved one. When you got the peace of God, Inside of you, you know you got hope and you will believe. I see mama, I see my friend, I see dad, I see my brothers and sister again. Secondly, living a pure life. We have to live a pure, pure life. First Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Do, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you, whom you have received from God, not your own. You were bought with the price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. The way you live, how you live, what you put in your body, how you carry on. If you live in a pure life, you're going to live so. We sing the song, I'm going to live so. God can use me. God can use me anywhere and anytime. That's that's how he wants us to be in these trying times. But if your body, if your life ain't pure, then you may find yourself living any kind of way. Then he says, living a blameless life. Blameless life. He didn't say perfect life. Because none of us are perfect. We've all sinned and come short of God. But we have to live in a way that, that, that people can't blame us or what people can't find fault in us. You don't want to give the, the enemy the ammunition to destroy you. We all have a testimony. But we also have a past. We all have a testimony. But we also have skeletons. We all have a tell testimony. God has brought us away and brought us through some things. But there are still some people on the outside who we used to hang with, who we used to roll with, who know some things about us. But I come back here to tell you, my beloved brothers and sisters, when you got God in your life, regardless of what you've done, you still can live a blameless life. Have I got a witness here? But I heard Paul say in Romans 12 and 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able 
to test and approve what is God's will. Is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. What are you saying, my beloved brothers and sisters? The question is, where do we go from here? We keep on moving forward. Because a few days ago we celebrated our homecoming. We used Philippians talking about forgetting the things that are behind. Hand moving and pressing towards a better day. The hear I said, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I come by here to let you know. Have I got a witness here? Yes, you may ask, well, do we go from here? I tell you, we go straight to the Lord Jesus. Have I got a witness here? Um, yes, when things start getting hard, go straight to Jesus. When they start calling you everything but a child of God, go straight to the Lord. When they start uh, setting traps for you and digging ditches for you to fall in, go straight to the Lord. Because he lets us know uh, that he has already overcome the world. And because he has already overcome the world, he is the perfect pattern. Have I got a witness here? Yes, y'all know what a pattern is. Uh, uh, yes, my grandmother used to go to the store uh, and get her a butter rick uh, and get her pattern uh, and cut it out uh, um, and put the material on it uh, and cut it out uh, and sew it together. Um, and if she does it right, uh, yes, uh, um, the dress that she made uh, look just like the dress on the picture. Um, have I got a witness here? I'm saying is uh, uh, when we use the pattern uh, of the Lord Jesus uh, and apply it to our lives, uh, yes, uh, we will uh, look just like Jesus. Uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, I heard uh, uh, the hymn writer say, uh, the song writer says, uh, please uh, be patient with me. Um, God, uh, yes, uh, is not through with me yet. Uh, yes, um, every now and then, uh, he put me uh, in a fiery furnace. Yes, uh, to burn away uh, all of the impurities. Uh, sometimes uh, he made me go through struggles uh, to make me stronger, uh, to make me better. Uh, please uh, be patient with me. Uh, God, I say God uh, is not through with us yet. Uh, when God, uh, yes, uh, get through with us, uh, we shall uh, come forth uh, like pure gold. Uh, have I get a witness here? Um, where do we go from here? Huh? We go with Jesus. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I come to the garden alone huh? while the dude huh, is still on the roses huh? and the voice I hear huh, fall upon my ear huh? the son of God huh, discloses huh? he walks with me huh? oh he talks with me huh? he tells me that I'm his own huh? and the joy and the joy and the joy that we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? We go straight to Jesus. And stay in his word and follow his instructions. There may be someone here today 
who's out of the ark of safety they don't know who jesus is we'll give you an opportunity to come give your life to christ when you stand won't you come and if everything is good with you with the lord jesus there may be someone who needs prayer if you need prayer if you want prayer maybe you're going through you're going through Let us pray. With me, and he Father God, with in me, in Jesus' name, he takes where do we go from here, Lord? Me when the challenge of life is faces us every day, where do we go from here? When the doctor gives us a bad report, God, where do we go from here? We share as we when family can. life is not a deal, where do we go from we here? We know, Lord, we no come straight to you. So, God, in the name of Jesus, we come at this time. Bringing our concerns and our cares to the altar. God, Simon have come down to the altar and God you know their situation you know everything that they're encountering so God in Jesus name we lift them up to you we ask your blessings upon Miss Juanita you ask your blessing upon Brother Malone we ask your blessing upon Sister Isetta we ask your blessing to Brother Brother Terry your blessing upon Brother Whitfield and we ask your blessing upon the entire congregation. But Lord, we know, God, that you're still able to supply our needs. We know, God, that you're able to make a way out of no way. So, God, we lift them up. But then, God, special request, special blessing upon Miss Isetta. As she prepare for surgery, oh God. God, we ask for your protection over her we ask God that you take the doctor's hand and you become the real doctor whatever proceeds whatever thing that whatever that needs to be done we ask God that you do it like none other can and God we want you to bless her and make it successful not for her sake for the sake of others that when she's re fully recovered she'll have another testimony oh yes you've done it once before you blessed her through surgeons before you blessed her and she has all of that in her curia cabinet but God give her a better testimony that she can go and tell the world that you're definitely a doctor in a sick room oh god we lift you up and we magnify your name and then god when it's all over we ask god that you give us a home where job said the wicked will cease from troubling and the weary will be at rest it is in your son jesus name that we pray let every heart say amen and amen amen god bless you None other has ever known Yes, sir. Well, so 
song right there. That's a song. Before we bless the offering, I just want to make a presentation to the YPD department of one of my dear friends that I see on a weekly basis uh, has sent a donation uh, to Townsley Chapel. Uh, and so I want to just present this and we're going to put it in the youth department, YPD Treasury. Uh, $250. Amen. Let us say we give thee but that arm. Um. We give thee but that arm. Um. Whatever gift. All that we have. Let every heart say. God bless you. You may be seated. God bless you. At this time, so Christ will come, and then we will quickly get out of your way. Good morning. Announcements. Sister Linda Wilson would like to meet with all members of the Missionary Society immediately following morning worship for a brief second. The Georgia Conference Lay Organization will be celebrating their annual Christmas Holy Communion service on, sa on Saturday, December 16, 2023 at 11 a.m. at the Mother Church of Georgia, St. Philip Monumental AME Church, where the Reverend Dr. Bernard Clark is the pastor. Please note that there will be a one-hour lay meeting prior to the service, with the meeting beginning at 9.45 a.m. and ending at 10.45. Please note that the communion service will be in person. We encourage you to invite pastors, family, friends, and church members to join this service. We're asking all conference officers and laity to wear your lay blue and white. Please note that registration for the meeting will begin at 930. Registration is $10. The service was planned just for you and mine. Brother Lester Foster is the reporter. Congratulations to Sister Sherelle Young, who will receive her Bachelor of Science in Nursing on Saturday, December 16th from Georgia Southern College. And congratulations to Master Israel J. Young, who was elected president of the Elementary Beta Club for the state of Georgia. Sherelle is the daughter of Sister Brenda Young Price, and Israel is the son of 
Reverend and Mrs. John Young, and the grandson of Sister Price. The AME Church Evangelical Minister Union Advent Revival is held every Tuesday here at Townsend Chapel Church beginning at 7 o'clock. It is also streamed live on Facebook and YouTube. On Tuesday, December the 12th, the pastor, Charles Dumas, Jr. of Townsend Chapel AME Church, will be the messenger. Reverend Dr. Bernard Clark is the president of the EMU of the AME Church. I'm asking all choir members, church members, ushers, please come out to support our pastor as he brings the message on Tuesday. We don't want visitors to come to our house, and we're not here to greet them. Do we have any visitors in the house at this time? Do we have any individuals who are celebrating their birthday in the month of December? Will you please stand? You were at, <laughs> yeah. Those that were not at <laughs> communion service. Sister Bradshaw. Uh, Sam, Sam Jr.'s birthday was uh, is December the 13th. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. Uh, looking forward to seeing all of you who can possibly be here uh, on Tuesday night, uh, Tuesday evening. We're looking forward uh, for having a good time. We're looking forward to you being here, and we pray that the Lord will use us in a mighty way. Amen. Thank our choir. Didn't the men do a good job? Hey. Thank our musicians. Thank our, our video person. I thank our ushers, our stewardess, and everyone in their prospective places. Thank you. I see a baby. I see a baby. Uh, bring the baby up. Bring the baby. The daddy bring your baby up. Uh, great grandma would say she got it. All right. Look, just like your dad. You can't deny him. Looking at the lights. All right. Hey. How you doing? What's his name? He's a junior. There you go. There is my amen. We are so happy. We are so happy. Uh, yeah, all right. Come, come on. Give him a hand. Amen. 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 Let us stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. blessing praise him our creature here below Father God, in Jesus' name, we are grateful and thankful for this gathering. Thank you for this worship experience, God, for sending your Holy Spirit to be with us. Now, God, as we leave this place, we ask, God, that you will continue to bless us, protect us, and be with us. Now, God, before we go, we need you to do a favor for us. 
we need you to go over to White Bluff. There's a facility over there called Pruitt Facility, Pruitt Health. Now, God, there's a room over there, room 522. There's one of our angels over there by the name of Betty Robbins. God, we need you to go in that room right now. God, we need you to touch her right now. We need you to move right now. We need you to strengthen her right now. We need you to heal her right now. We need you to give her power right now. We claim victory and healing right now. And God, when you should do that, when you should do that, we pray, God, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all of the praise. Now, God, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, from God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, be with us until we meet again. Let every heart say, Amen. 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 God bless you. May the peace of God be with you.